Welcome everyone, this is a tutorial on how to install and load a tune to your K-Tuner V1.2. Okay, now the first part of the process is very simple. Uh, inside of your K-Tuner box, you should have received a small card that tells you to go to the K-Tuner website and download their software. Okay, so once you download the software, um, if you do not have a K-Tuner username and login, Go ahead and create one and log into the system. Now, give it probably anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It does take a little while to register and for your computer to recognize your software uh, and actually log you in. Now, once it does, this is the layout that you're going to see. So this tutorial is going to start from after the software install on your computer and we'll pick it up from there. So in your box you should have received a K-Tuner version 1. Uh, this is as you can see a version 1.2. It plugs directly into the OBD2 port and it also has a port here so that you can plug in your USB cable and then it has an LED light on the outside so that you know that the, the unit is powered on. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the install instructions for this particular unit um, and I'm going to show you what you're going to be seeing on screen as you plug the unit in and as you're going through the flash process. Okay, so my unit is plugged into the USB cable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the cable into my computer. Uh, now this is immediately after taking the unit out of the box. So the vehicle is not flashed. I haven't done anything special as far as locking it to the ECU, anything like that. So this is exactly where you guys are going to pick up from. So unit gets plugged in. As you can see, there's power going to the unit. Now, when you plug it into your OBD2 on the bottom of the car, um, you'll also see this light here. Now, what happens is the system will recognize that your K-Tuner has not been locked to a specific ECU. So when we plugged it in, it says it appears the K-Tuner unit has not been locked to an ECU. Please connect to the vehicle before we continue to do the software update. So we're going to say OK. So now that the, the uh, K-Tuner is plugged into the computer, I'm going to show you what happens when you plug in the unit into the OBD2 while also plugged into the computer. Now, when you plug this into the OBD2 port, the LED light is going to be facing towards the inside of your legs, like so. As you can see, it's facing towards my legs. Um, on my vehicle, it's a 2018 Honda Accord. The OBD2 port is underneath this particular section of the dash. So I'm going to plug it in real quick. Okay, so it is plugged in. Let me show you real quick. Let's go ahead and clear this error. I'm going to power on the accessory of my vehicle, so you do it once. And we're going to do it one more time to turn on the accessory. So now, if you see a light down there, now the vehicle is powering on the K2 unit. It is not being powered by my laptop. So now, when I plug in the unit, All right, now we have something different. So now it's asking us if we want to lock this ECU. Okay, so the key there was to make sure that you have the car powered on to accessory mode. Do not turn the vehicle all the way on just to accessory mode. Um, make sure that it's plugged into the OBD2 and then plug it into your computer. From there, it's going to give you this little pop-up box that's saying your ECU, which it displays there on screen, um, it's about to be locked, so if we agree to it, hit agree and hit yes. Okay, now one thing to remember here, it, it is important to remember that your laptop or whatever you're using, it does need to have an active internet connection. Um, at the bottom, the system is recognizing that we are connected to the ECU. 
If you were not connected there, it would be giving you uh, some sort of error. It would either be red or yellow, and it would explain to you what's happening. But at this point, we know our system's connected. Uh, we do see the light on down there. Uh, we did get this awesome prompt box, which tells us that it is recognizing the ECU, so we're going to hit yes. All right, so the next box that pops up is this K-Tuner needs to be set up in order to connect. This includes setting up a recovery and the factory tune. Would you like to set up this ECU now? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click yes. And it is preparing. Now when the system is connected to your OBD2, you will see a couple of indications. Right now it's yellow, it means preparing. It is uploading, so it's gathering data from your ECU to the computer. So at this point, we will wait for it to finish uploading. And then I'll progress you to the next step. All right, so we're just about done uploading. Oh, and I just finished. All right, so at this point, the unit is connected to the K-Tuner software. Um, it does consider it logging because now that it's made a backup of your factory ECU, it can start gathering data on your vehicle. Okay, so these are just basic uh, information on the vehicle. In order to get a flash on your ECU, here's what you're gonna do. In the menus up top, you have a plus symbol. It says new file. Click on that. When you do that, it comes up with a base map creator. Now because you locked it to your ECU, what it's gonna do is it's going to recognize the type of vehicle that it's connected to. So if you have it connected to uh, 2008 Honda Civic SI or if you have it connected to uh, um, a 99 Civic Si or even a Honda Accord 1.5 Turbo, it'll recognize that based off the ECU and it'll provide you with the available tunes for that particular vehicle. Okay, so this 1.2 version and even the version 2, um, you can apply those to any vehicle that's listed on the K-Tuner's website. So what we're going to do is we are going to hit the plus symbol below my vehicle it's telling us that we do have a description of my vehicle so I'm going to click on the description and then I'm going to hit next so what we're telling the system is we're telling the system that for my Honda Accord 2.0 for my factory ECU we would like to create a base map for my ECU. Okay, so KTuner already created some different maps for you guys. Okay, so you have a starting point of factory based calibration. You have a stage one, which basically means that the system will upload uh, a little bit higher boost parameters. Um, it does not give you access to eco mode, it sh and, and actually, as a matter of fact, none of the buttons work. So if you have a 10-speed automatic, your sport mode doesn't work, your, um, your eco button doesn't work, it's just always on to stage one tune. Your dual targets, however, they do allow you to utilize those buttons. So you have factory boost targets in eco mode. So what that means is when you have button pressed for eco mode, you have factory boost levels. When you're out of eco mode, then you feel the stage one tune and so on and so forth for stage two, uh, stage one dual tune target one. Um, what I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with stage two dual target one. And the reason why I'm doing that is if I ever want to lower my boost to make it like factory, I press the eco button. If I want to go to stage one, then I just drive in normal mode. If I want to have stage two, 
if I hit the sport button, then it's stage two. So you have the highest boost settings available for the vehicle by pressing sport. So I can utilize all three modes with stage two, dual target one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Let me just get back to it because I accidentally closed it. So again, stage two, dual target one. You can read about all of these on K-Tuner's website. It tells you what each individual tune is. Um, that was just a short synopsis of it. I'm going to hit next. Okay. Now it's loaded that tune to the K-Tuner program. Now, if you're an experienced tuner, you can go through and you can change all of these parameters. Um, if any of you guys have ever seen a tuner perform um, like a dyno run when he's tuning a vehicle, he's messing with this right here. Um, if you guys have ever heard of PFI Speed um, or Boosted Boys, they have uh, a tuner there that messes with all of those targets there in order to get you the best map possible. Okay. Now, what you care about is everything in this section right here. So I'm going to go through one by one so that you can see what each individual section does. So we have the layout. We are not going to touch anything in the layout. We don't care about that. We have main parameters. You can change your rev limits if you want to. So if you want to be able to rev the car higher, you can. I would not recommend messing with that. You have a basic two-step. So your limit is 4,500 RPMs, um, and it restarts again at 35. So if you're trying to build boost and stay in a specific zone, that's how you do a two-step. You have disables and monitors, so you can disable any of these sensors if you need to. For those people that are doing uh, downpipes that need to disable maybe O2 sensors, you can do that. You have target idles, closed loop settings, fuel cut settings, math scaling. So these are all beyond what your average person is going to do, most of these ones. Your quick adjustment, however, I like to mess with these. So I like to go for throttle response. I'm going all the way to throttle response 2. For turbo responsiveness, I'm going turbo responsiveness 3. I'm going down to quick enables. So I want early spool. I definitely want the turbo to spool quickly. Um, as soon as my foot is on the gas, even at, we'll say, 5% of, of what the, the throttle is supposed to be at, it starts to spool. You can do boost by gear. Um, again, I don't really mess with boost by gear. I don't know enough about the boost table to be able to mess with this. Uh, you can also go in and correct fuel, ignition. Um, there's advanced settings if you want to, but that's basically what I do at this point. So do your quick adjustments and your quick enables, and you're good to go. From there, you are going to hit the up arrow, which is telling us and the system to upload this, this base map that we just created into the K-Tuner. Of course, it's telling you make sure that everything is plugged into a charger. Uh, last thing you want to do is start this process and have your laptop die on you. Let's just confirm how much battery I have. Plenty of battery, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to say yes. All right, so as soon as you click that up arrow, you're going to get a pop-up that does a couple of things for you. Now, if you're running the version 1.2 and you do not have an Android tablet that you will be running TunerView with, then what you want to do is just flash directly to the ECU. If you have a tablet that you are already running TunerView on, or if you have version 2, then you can enter the name of the tune that you just uploaded and then save it to one of the five slots. Now what will happen is, once you save a tune to slot one or slot two or three or four, you can then access that tune from within TunerView or from within the version two touchscreen unit. 
So in our case, um, I, I am going to be running to interview. However, I don't really need multiple tunes that I can flash back and forth to. Um, if I wanted to flash back to factory, it is very easy to do so. So in this case, I'm going to flash now directly over to the ECU. It is preparing. And as I showed you before, you have your preparing box down below. It is erasing the factory ECU. Now when you do that, you are going to get a bunch of errors on the screen. Because the factory ECU is being erased, a lot of the sensors don't know what's going on. So it's starting to recall an issue with them. That will go away. I will show you how to get that to go away here in a second. For now, we're just going to sit here and allow this to erase. Now, I'm going to cut the camera. Um, I'm going to come back when it's at the very end, and we'll continue the process. Okay, it is now flashing. Now, this process is going to take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. So once we get to the very end, I will put the camera back on and show you what to do next. All right, so the flashing is almost complete. As you can see in the bottom left corner, down here it says flashing, and we're almost done on screen. Okay. So the next thing it's telling us to do is we want to power the vehicle off and we want to leave it off for about 10 seconds. So my vehicle is still in accessory mode. I'm going to go ahead and hit the button once to turn it off. We're going to wait 10 seconds. So it's been five. And 10. So for the 2018 Honda Accord, you got to hit this Start button twice. Make sure that your foot is not on the brake. Second time to turn on to accessory mode. And then back on screen, of course it says turn the vehicle off, wait, then turn it back on. We're gonna hit okay. And our flash was successful. Congratulations, you now have your tune on there. Click okay to get out of that. All right, so the next step is how do we clear all these warnings on the dash? So some of you guys might be freaked out at this point. Um, how do I get this to go away? I don't want to take my car into the dealership with all these warnings on there because then I'm busted. Um, I'm about to show you how to do that. But before we get to that, go ahead and close your computer. Um, I'm going to take the USB cable out of the OBD2 port. OBD2 is still there. See a light on? Here's the cable, and in order to get that to go away, you simply have to drive about 500 feet. Um, what's gonna happen is the sensors are gonna reinitialize, and then it will recognize that the sensors are operational and everything is good to go. Now, once that's working, I'm going to connect my Amazon Fire 7 to my OBD2 K tuner via Bluetooth. So for those of you guys that were unaware or even those of you that are aware and just wanna see how to connect it, um, if you have an Android tablet, if you download Tuner View, it's an application that allows you to view your onboard diagnostics, similar to what the version two would do, but you can do it with a tablet. Um, you can do it with any Android tablet. Now, I decided to go with the Amazon Fire 7 just because it's fairly inexpensive, um, I got it on sale for about $30. Um, and all you have to do is sideload the Google Play Store. Once Google Play Store is on the unit, then you can download TunerView. Download TunerView to the tablet. Make sure that you are purchasing the correct, um, I'm just going to call it, Inter whenever you download TunerView, it gives you access to multiple programs. And when I say multiple programs, it's to different um, tuner units that you can that you can sync to. So for an our, our case, um, we're working with KTuner. So when you go through 
the different options. I think there's like seven or eight different uh, units that you can do. Like one of them's Honda, one of them's Niztune, one of them's K-Tuner. Just make sure you select K-Tuner. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to do, um, but I can understand people's confusion. So download K-Tuner app, um, download the 499 internal application for K-Tuner, and then I'm going to show you guys how to connect it via Bluetooth. Now, if you don't know how to sideload your Amazon Fire 7, I'm going to leave a link in the description that tells you exactly how to do it step by step. It took me about 10 minutes to do. It's super easy. Just follow the instructions. Um, I'm going to give you the link to the specific website that shows you exactly how to do it. It's just a matter of downloading four applications to the tablet. And then um, once you do that, you have access to the google play store you sign into google play store and then you can download pretty much any application that's in google play store and in our case that's tuner view okay so hold tight um, i'm going to show you guys how to clear these errors all right so in order to clear this uh, all you got to do is take a simple drive so i'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up now upon first startup uh, just realize that you do have whatever tune that you loaded into the vehicle so you will have additional power during this process uh, i do recommend just taking it slow i've never run into an issue you know flashing back and just speeding right away but um, i want to do this the correct way and show you guys how to reset these okay so i'm gonna pull out of my garage out of my driveway and i'm literally gonna drive like 500 feet down the street and this will clear So I'm coming to the end of my driveway here. I'm gonna be pulling onto the road. And you'll see here in a second that all of the yellow indicators disappear and it is green and it is good to go should be bingo and that's it that is all you have to do to install the k-tuner once it resets and it goes to green now you can play around so i'm gonna roll my windows down and see if you guys can hear the turbo spool it is on sport mode let me see if you guys can hear the turbo spool underneath stage two i'm gonna take it slow first Got some wheel spin. So that's it, guys. I mean, I drove it, like I said, 500 feet, it reset, and I'm good to go. So now, I'm going to park the vehicle back in the garage, and I'm going to show you guys how to install, or should I say, how to pair your tablet with TunerView. So let me pull into the All right, so we're parked. We're in accessory mode. Um, I have opened up TunerView on the tablet. I do have the K-Tuner unit here, just so I can show you guys how to start the process while freshly plugging it in. Remember, the LED light goes facing towards um, your legs. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in right now. Okay, so it is in there. And again, light is on. All right, so once your K-Tuner unit is plugged into the OBD2 and you have the tuner view open, um, I've already connected this unit, but I'm going to show you guys what you need to do. Um, you're going to slide the settings over, and you have a, a couple different ones. You have connect, camera mode, so if you want to put this tablet up and face it 
so that it's pointing outside of your windshield. You can record what's going on. Um, you can open your data logs. You can record to CSV files. You can switch colors. You can change your layouts. Um, you can go to the KTuner menu. So if you want to upload different flashes, you can. But in this case, we need to connect the unit to our tablet. So we're going to hit connect. Now, as you can see, it already has found my version one unit because it's previously been connected. But in your case, it's not going to have that, right? So the first thing that you want to do is scan for devices. It will search, search, search. And what will happen is this K-Tuner version one will be in this side right here. So what you'll do is you'll tap on it. When you tap on it, it's going to pop up and ask you to enter the Bluetooth pin. The Bluetooth pin is the last five digits of your K-Tuner serial number. So where do you find that? So I'm going to unplug the unit real quick. And as you can see here on the back, there's a serial number. So in our case, the last five would be 01395. You type in the code, you click the orange check mark button and then click OK and then it will automatically connect you to TunerView. So I'm gonna plug in my unit and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So the unit is plugged in, we are good to go. Let me auto connect. It is connecting and it says connected. Okay, so it's showing you some basic information here. Now, if I turn the vehicle on, now it's showing me onboard diagnostics. So obviously your RPM gauge, your air fuel temperature, your exhaust temperature, your pounds per square inch, so that's your boost. Throttle position sensor. And then your air, free, air fuel ratio is followed by your gear. So I personally like this for my 10 speed because I can see what gear I'm in. Um, so yeah, that's how you get it connected. Now here in a second, I'm actually gonna mount this unit inside the vehicle and I'm gonna show you exactly how to go about that. So the next part of the process is to actually mount the tablet uh, in the vehicle. So I'm going to be putting my tablet right here. Um, it does fit perfectly. Seven inch tablet does fit in this spot right here. Um, there's a number of ways that you can mount this into the vehicle. There's people that use the mount right here. Um, a couple guys have a mount that come up from the bottom of the seat and it mounts right here um, I personally think that it fits pretty well right here now what I'm gonna do is I have purchased a magnetic car mount so this larger box right here is going to stick right here with double-sided tape this is it so as you can see it'll sit right there um, it is raised off of there so the tablet will sit a little bit further out that way it's not you know necessarily hitting directly inside of there um, it does come with three different backings so one of these plates will go on the back of the tablet I'm probably gonna choose the the wider fatter one not necessarily the longer one but the wider one will give me more room to kind of position the tablet up or down and then of course it comes with some additional tape and then um, wipes so I'm gonna get this mounted most likely where it's at right there. Maybe even a little bit lower. Um, and then I'm going to mount that other metal piece onto the back of the tablet. That way anytime I want to, I just put it right there and it will automatically stick. So let me go ahead and get that mounted and then I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like. Um, that way I'm not fumbling to do it uh, while recording. So here is the magnet mounted. As you can see, 
it is mounted to this exterior cover and then that plate is also mounted to the tablet so what's going to happen is tablet will sit like so very easy to remove very easy to mount and this can still go up so very convenient um, you can find this particular magnetic mount on Amazon and it's pretty inexpensive so let me open up tuner view that way you guys can see what it looks like and within tuner view you can change your layout so there's a bunch of different let's see if I can get an angle where you guys can see there's a bunch of different graphs that you can choose on here or layouts um, so of course pick whatever one that you guys think is appropriate for your vehicle color scheme wise um, this app is actually pretty cool it's it's uh, definitely easy to connect to your K tuner unit um, that's pretty much it guys I mean one thing that I'm gonna do you can have the charge cable going from the inside of this and connecting to the outside because my mount does not sit flush against this it actually gives me a little bit of room to allow for my charge cable to go on the side of this so that's the uh, finished product that's the mount as you can see here, it's got a couple different uh, items there that it's recognizing. Air fuel ratio, battery, um, air intake temperature, the exhaust temperature, and then PSI, my gear, of course RPM miles per hour. Um, I personally like this one, like I told you guys before on the uh, version 2 install. I like to have the gear showing, so this one works out pretty well for me. So that's the end of the video. If you guys have any questions, of course, always reach out. Um, I love talking to you guys in the comments. And uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure that you, you know give the video a like. Um, definitely if you have not subscribed go ahead and subscribe to me um, like I said I definitely appreciate you guys and uh, you know appreciate you guys watching the videos uh, in the meantime stay tuned um, I'm gonna be shooting a video here for uh, cars and coffee um, one of the guys actually found me locally and invited me to cars and coffee uh, it's one of the board members of the um, the event who drives a new type R um, if you're watching this video don't forget to say what's up in the comments um, but yeah you guys can see you know like I said all the vehicles that we have here in wonderful New Mexico uh, last time that there was a cars and coffee I think there was probably close to 2,000 vehicles that was there um, I'll actually probably put up a video I didn't shoot the video very well I wasn't using my gimbal I was just kind of using uh, my Sony camera in my hand, so the video probably gonna be a little bit choppy. I haven't actually gone through and edited uh, But I will put that up that we guys can see it uh, in the meantime That's all I have for you guys today and uh, Y'all stay safe. This is Fahrenheit Motorsports